Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a new tutorial and we will learn how to minimize the attack vector and the image size of a docker.net web API image. So let's kick it off. To get started I quickly create a new folder. I will call it demo API and within this folder we generate our uh, web API to, to be a bit faster with uh, the actual learning here. So to do so for everybody who don't know the comment, we can generate a .NET uh, web API with the .NET CLI using the .NET command, then you calling the template name web API and um, also uh, I will also define the output path, uh, which in my case is the actual folder I made. So there we go project created. Let's uh, give it a try if it runs. So we are starting the web API. I will copy the link and we give it a try and see if we can see the swagger page. There we go. The actual demo API hosted with its swagger page as we created the uh, demo API based on the Microsoft uh, uh, template, uh, yeah, we can receive weather forecasts. So let's see if also this one works. We try it out and execute it. And yeah, there we go. We get some weather or temperature data back. That's nice. Next, we will actually stop the web API and then open our newly created project in, in an IDE. I will use RIDA in this case. So here we see our new project. I will also quickly open the terminal. And yeah, what we do next is uh, let Rider help us and generate a basic Docker file. So I go on, yeah, I, I will actually add the Docker support. I will do it for Linux. And as we can see, we have a Docker file as well as a Docker Ignore uh, file generated. So that's the one Rider generated for me. To, um, yeah, we can actually now start to build the image and take a look. Before we do so, because uh, I want to run the docker build command from the demo API folder, I actually, uh, to ensure that the, that the relative path is right, um, need to remove this one because the CS project file is directly in the folder and uh, yeah, then it can also copy directly to the folder. So there we go, quickly save everything. And now we can actually build the image. Okay, build. And I will call the tech demo API basic. That looks good. So we have this one and then um, because I know the output will be big, let's quickly resize the, um, the terminal. So we see a little bit more of the terminal and I will open an Ubuntu shell because what we will do here now is um, I will actually use Trivi, which is a security scanner. Um, yeah open source one provided by Aqua Security, which we can use um, to actually scan our created image. I will uh, use the command trivi image and then we call it demo API basic and uh, yeah, trivi will scan based on my local repository the uh, image we just created. As we can see, there is a lot of output showing us a lot of vulnerabilities, low, high, if I scroll all the way up, we see many, many more of these uh, vulnerabilities being detected. And um, yeah, even critical ones in there. And as a summary on the top, there are 72 
um, vulnerabilities found on this Debian distribution, um, 58 low, 4 medium, 4 high and even 6 critical. So definitely uh, yeah, some, something that, that I don't really run to one to one anywhere and, and open up attack vectors. So this set, how can we minimize it? Well, um, yeah, I mean minimizing the, the attack vector and hardening the image, but what I also want to minimize now or resize again is the terminal. So what we can actually do is, as, a, as we saw and as I said, this was using, um, this was using a Debian uh, distribution, so we can quite easily uh, uh, reduce the attack vector already when we go with um, when we go with Ubuntu, for example. Therefore, um, I'm using Focal here, uh, which is a specific tag for the latest Ubuntu distribution. So just go with this one here. Save it again and build my Docker image. If we do this and again run trivi against the focal image, make it big again, we see there are medium and low findings, but it's already, yeah, I would say much more secure. There are 31 low findings and 9 medium. Still, that's maybe not what we want to achieve uh, finally. So, what we can actually do to harden the image much more is, um, yeah, it's multiple things. So first of all, um, I want to use a different base image. I want to go with Alpine, which is a kind of minimal Unix uh, distribution. And at the same time, I don't want to use the actual ASP.NET, even if I later want to run an ASP.NET uh, uh, web API. But uh, yeah, I will go instead with um, with the runtime uh, uh, dependency image, which is actually an image that uh, uh, yeah, requires me to ship the runtime dependencies and, and doesn't have any uh, um, or yeah, doesn't have any 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 more stuff uh, uh, installed. So um, yeah, we'll go with this one. We'll also change the build to our time here and. Um, to, add, uh, yeah, to, to minimize actually the attack vector in a way by minimizing the image and, and the amount of files because less stuff uh, uh, is, is less attackable, it's quite simple. So <laughs> if I have a lot of stuff installed, there might be vulnerabilities in a lot of stuff. If I have less installed, there um, is less to, to actually attack. So therefore, um, we also will go with, um, yeah, with a self-contained um, and, and, and specific build on the .NET side. So, I will add the following step to the publishing command. No, oh, that was not what I wanted. So um, I explicitly defined the runtime for Alpine x64. Um, yeah, I tell .NET to publish it self-contained. Um, I also want it to be trimmed and in a single file, so I actually uh, uh, yeah, reduced the size of my actual build uh, uh, for, the, for the .NET uh, Web API. At the same time, if I do so and uh, yeah, do it in a single file on a Unix machine, um, I can't run it with the .NET command here, so I um, actually have to give it the right executable to then start or the right entry point. And um, furthermore, we also want to secure the image in a way that um, we actually want it with a, with a um, user that has a limited amount of, um, of rights actually, um, and definitely not root rights. So what we do for this is we 
add the following command into our docker file. We actually run the command for adding a new user on the Alpine uh, distribution. We do so with add user. We define a unique user ID. We also disable the password of the user. We um, tell the add user command to not be interactive and therefore don't ask us for additional information like first name, last name and so on. The new user is or should be called app user and we also provide this app user the rights uh, actually to the owner rights uh, uh, for the um, app folder. And um, yeah, which is uh, in the end then the folder uh, in which the application uh, uh, lives and uh, is executed. After having added the user, we switch the scope uh, to, um, yeah, to that user and therefore ensure that the application later runs uh, uh, under yeah, under the access of or under the, or with the rights of this user. This said, that we have a few simple changes. So let me save it all again. And um, let's do an additional build. Oh, build. And now I call the tech demo API Alpine secure. We wait a few seconds until the build finishes. There we go. And I will actually scan the image again. We call it Alpine Secure. And as we can see, there is zero vulnerabilities found. That's nice. That's what we yeah, aim to achieve. So let's take a look in Docker de Desktop. And uh, as we can see, the um, actual Alpine Secure image which we created is just yeah, roughly uh, 50 megabyte big, while, um, or small, I have to say, while um, both others, the uh, Ubuntu one as well as the um, Debian ones with the full ASP.NET uh, uh, installation are actually more or less of the same size uh, uh, and over 200 megabytes big. So having a smaller size image actually is helping us uh, uh, also in terms of pulling the image, it's uh, uh, requiring yeah, less uh, uh, storage on the registry, but also um, less network traffic, which in cloud environment sometimes might mean uh, 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 yeah, reduced cost. And uh, it's definitely also faster to load this image. I mean, maybe because it's a little bit small uh, from a, from a size uh, uh, of the of the font here. Maybe also quickly run it here. Go with Docker images. And as we can see on the top here again, 52 megabyte and 230 and 212. So the last part actually, we need to check if we can really um, really run the um, Docker, yeah, the self-contained and, and hardened Docker image or if uh, maybe our application now is broken. So let's give it a try. I use the docker run command interactively. <clears throat> I actually uh, yeah, map the port uh, uh, 8000 to 80 within the container. 80 was the HTTP one exposed. Obviously, uh, uh, to make it real secure in a production environment, we need to go with HTTPS here and uh, yeah, install certificate and so on. Um, I will tell uh, uh, docker to use the ASP.NET core environment variable um, and uh, yeah, I actually will set it for development because um, this is required to um, add the swagger to UI um, at runtime and um, yeah I also need to tell um, docker which image to run it was demo API alpine secure There we go. 
it's running. And let's quickly see if we can find the Swagger page. Obviously, this one will no longer load. If I do a refresh, the actual one which we tried in the beginning is no longer loading. But if I go with localhost on HTTP and port 8000, which was the one I mapped to 80 within the container, we again get the Swagger API or the Swagger page for the demo API and we can execute it and see some weather data again. Temperature data, I have to say. So, what does it mean? Let's quickly summarize. We actually created a very small ASP.NET Docker API image, 50 megabit uh, uh, size. At the same time, we added an application user um, yeah, with limited rights actually running these uh, um, web API. We published the web API self-contained in a single file trim, so that makes the size uh, 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 smaller as well. And um, yeah, we used uh, 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 the um, runtime dependency image um, and the, the Alpine ones uh, to actually have a very, very small um, image, which we scanned with Trivi and uh, in the end finally saw zero uh, vulnerabilities at the moment. Obviously, vulnerabilities can come up uh, uh, again. There, um, yeah, Things are changing, so if we don't have vulnerabilities on that image today, that doesn't mean uh, uh, we will not have it uh, uh, tomorrow, so therefore it's important um, yeah, within CICD uh, in an automated way usually to, to scan your images uh, either with Trivi or whatever other solution. Thanks a lot. See you next time.